Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to Channel 5 News, live from Pittsburgh, PA. Tonight, we have two expert guests here to give us some insight on the emergency COVID-19 treatment, remdesivir, which is authorized in over 50 countries. Please welcome Gabby and Emma. Thank you for having us. Hello, Gabby and Emma. Uh, now, Gabby and Emma are two uh, biotechnologists from Gilead Sciences who have been hands-on in the laboratory testing process of remdesivir against SARS-CoV-2. Tonight, we will hear from them about the relevancy of this drug and the biochemistry behind how the drug works. We know that this drug is used in emergencies related to COVID-19, but what symptoms does a potential patient have to have to receive this treatment? Um, symptoms of the coronavirus are really similar to the common cold or flu virus. The difference is that it causes more severe illness and spreads more easily than the flu. Um, it takes a lot longer to exhibit symptoms, usually 2 to 14 days after exposure to the virus or exposure to a person infected with the virus. And it can be contagious for um, extended periods of time. Some emergency warning symptoms could be trouble breathing, persistent pain, or chain chest pain pressure, um, confusion, and ability to stay awake, or blue lips or face. Wow, those are really serious. How many people have been infected by the coronavirus? Since about November of 2019, over 44 million people worldwide have been infected with the virus, and over a million people have died. Generally, the symptoms prevent, present more severely in those with underlying health conditions, such as heart disease, cancer, or diabetes, or the elderly, because it's harder for them to fight off this virus. Um, something that makes it so dangerous is that it spreads extremely easily, and it's been increasing in infection rate in the United States specifically since the beginning of 2020. Currently, there's over 8.5 million cases in the United States with 225,000 deaths. My goodness, that's a lot of people. Surely this has had to have some kind of effect on the global economy. Yes, it's definitely had a pretty big effect nationally and worldwide. Economic systems all around the world are now in recession and crisis. Specifically, a lot of healthcare systems have suffered because they've been overloaded and no one was really ready for this volume of patients. Trade has also decreased drastically due to the new coronavirus travel restrictions, which has definitely hurt the agricultural industry as well. And then yet another industry that's suffering is the petroleum and oil industry, as oil prices change daily with the changing situation. So overall, it hasn't been great for the global economy. It definitely has had a really big impact on everyone's employment status. Moving on to the enzyme activity, of the drug that you and Gabby have been researching. Um, research for treatment has been ongoing, but it's my understanding that you both have been involved with the development of remdesivir, which some of our audience might know as Be Beclery, um, which is its brand name. Could you explain the enzyme that this antiviral medication targets in the body? Sure, so part of the coronavirus replication process is it's, quick replication of its DNA in order to create more viral cells. So in remdesivir research, we're looking to target RNA polymerase, which is an essential part of the viral DNA replication. So RNA polymerase's main job is to create the RNA strand used in transcription, which is made from the DNA strand. So the job of it in creating this strand is to add an take away nucleotides from the RNA strand. So in viruses, basically this is the means that allows them to replicate so quickly, which is what we're aiming to stop with the development of this drug. Right, right. So how does remdesivir work to stop this enzyme? So when remdesivir is um, activated, it's analogous to ATP. So then it's used as a substrate by viruses um, and it outcompetes ATP for to be incorporated into the new RNA strand. And this causes premature termination of the RNA strand. Okay, interesting. Uh, now I'm aware, Gabby, you brought a diagram for us to help our um, audience gain a better un understanding of how the drug, drug receptor has been implicated in the coronavirus. 
Yeah, so the diagram is shown here. Um, it shows the SARS virus binding to ACE2 receptor, which allows it to enter and infect the cell. Um, ACE2 is an enzyme located on the surface of many different cell types. Uh, for example, lung cells, gut cells, heart, bladder, pancreas, kidney, and nose cells, um, even eye and brain cells it's been found in. Um, the active molecule is not able to enter the cell without a rate-limiting um, phosphorylation step. So, so instead, uh, remdesivir enters the cell and it's activated once it passes through the membrane. Um, the activation of remdesivir is accomplished through hydrolysis by esterases in the molecules formed by intracellular nucleoside phosphate uh, kinases. So the activated drug then binds to um, RD. RP, which is RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, um, and this blocks the continuation of RNA-dependent RNA replication, which prevents the SARS-CoV-2 virus from replicating further. How the receptor protein works in the cell is that RNA-dependent RNA replication um, is very specific to RNA viruses, um, and it doesn't affect cellular RNA. So the RDRP exclusively replica replicates um, the viral RNA genome and how the protein receptor associates with the disease is that in cell activity replicating coronavirus RNA, RNA polymerase is essential to the process. So RDRP catalyzes the synthesis of viral DNA and replication of the viral genome within the infected cells is uh, such an important stage of the COVID life cycle. Um, therefore, um, this is what allows the virus to spread. So when it's cut off, um, that's how you keep the virus from spreading further. Extremely, extremely interesting. Um, so just a couple more questions for you guys. Uh, first, how does remdesivir inhibit the RNA synthesis to remove the ability of the SARS-CoV-2 RNA from being able to replicate? And what interactions between the drug and drug target amino acid residues are present? Sure, Christian. So um, the RNA synthesis is terminated by binding to a nucleotide, which causes steric inhibition, um, which triggers an end to the chain replication. So the steric clash occurs between RDVTP and S861 residues on the RNA. Um, this eventually terminates the entire replication of viral RNA, and the residue is actually tends to be present in all coronaviruses, um, but it doesn't have an inhibitory activity um, on any cellular RNA, only viral RNA. Wow, that's really awesome. I know I've learned so, so much. I hope our audience has too. Uh, thank you both so much for being here tonight and for edu educating us on this treatment. Yes, it looks like that's all we have time for today, but we look forward to hopefully having you both on the show in the future. And be sure to everyone watching from home to join us after the break for the long-awaited One Direction reunion performance.